Hi guys, it's Dale from Elephant Memories, and today I'm going to be doing my very first live. Um, I'm going to be painting on um, some wood cutouts, uh, like this right here. So we laser cut these. Um, we do all different sizes and shapes. And then just by adding a little bit of painted details, um, this is kind of what it looks like. You might wonder what can you do with these? I mean, it is fun to paint. I really love to do these. Um, do all kinds of stuff. You can do them solid to make it like super, super easy. Um, you can also put a lot of detail in, like this guy right here. Um, sometimes I will, uh, I'll make all kinds of stuff with it. This is actually a little ribbon um, bookmark. So we did some handmade books uh, with vintage page designs. And uh, you basically just glue it to the ribbon like this, put it in the back of the book and you have a nice little bookmark. So a very simple project right there. I started these by making a whole bunch of different ornaments. Um, like this might be one of the ornaments that we were working on. And I have more painting to do, but uh, for this one, I just ended up gluing stuff on. This is the only bird I have uh, that's actually painted right now, so maybe we'll try some of those. Let me just add a few of these. I like the birds. I thought they came out really good. Um, maybe I would put a little deer on the bottom, something like that. And that would be an ornament. So simple ways to do some ornaments. Um, we have other ornaments, uh, this shape. This is a magnet. You see the magnet on the back. Uh, for these, uh, we actually just engraved a town name on them and then would end up just gluing them again. And you just put some little, little animals on it. Um, this is what I would do. I really like the eagle. Uh, in Lowell, there is a uh, nesting eagles, and I actually see them all the time, uh, which is pretty cool. And they actually have a lot of little critters in here. So I don't know, maybe you would do uh, something like that. Or you could do a deer. I really like the deer too. Something like that. And a really cute little magnet. Simple to do. I just use acrylic paint like this I recycle a lot of stuff so uh, my husband really likes this yogurt and I really like this glass jar so I use this for my water I take these tops like this oh hi Josie Thanks for joining, Jose. Make sure you ask any uh, questions. So I take these tops, and this is kind of what I'm going to use for my paint palette. Uh, then you just need a couple of different brushes and some paper towels. And that's really all you need to do with these. So some type of a cutout. Yep, I've got a laser, which makes things a lot easier. Uh, but you don't need to. Um, maybe you don't do this small, but a scroll saw would work as well. So you can hand cut these uh, pretty easy. Uh, so with that, um, let's make a couple of otters. There's something here that you see that you want me to give a, a try. Let me know. And if I have the little critter, I will get going on it. What? Go back to Facebook and try again. Josie, just try it. So Jeff's saying that he's not seeing it. So try it again, Jeff. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use some white. Go on there. 
white and black is always good. So I use those for a lot of details. Uh, I might use just a hint of, actually a hint of brown. Let's try this. I want the chest to be just a little bit creamy. Maybe I'll actually start off with a deer because it does take a little while. These are already painted and then I let them dry. It does take a little while for them to dry. So I think I'm going to do the background of the deer, which is just going to be this solid brown or tan right here. And I like to actually add a, a good amount of water to these. Uh, it, sometimes it lets the grains show through. You certainly don't have to do it. You can do it a lot more solid. So I'm just going to do the whole thing, this tan color, and then let it dry. It really doesn't take that long to dry either. The thing about painting on wood is that the wood is porous, so it's really going to take some of that uh, wetness in and dries pretty quickly. So I'm, I'm currently at my studio at Western Ave and uh, there's about 400 artists here. So if you hear people in the background. Um, that could be some of the other artists, whether they're above me. Um, there's pottery sculptors above me. Um, some, sometimes you're hearing them slam the their clay down. Um, I'm in the woodworking section, so it can be quite loud. All right, we're going to set that aside and let that dry. And then I'm going to work on this little otter. Maybe change up my brush a little bit finer. So for him, I, her, I'm going to say it's a her. We're going to make some babies too. So for her, I'm going to use um, some white and I might just add just a touch of this tan to make it a little bit on the creamy side. It's a, uh, I used to work with otters and they, they're, not a stark white uh, so changing that just adding a touch will do and we're just going to add super simple details for her they typically have white under their chin and on their chest so for her we're going to go from just under her chin. So she's kind of standing up and looking over her shoulder. And then we're going to go kind of to the belly like this. put as much or as little detail. Don't worry if uh, maybe you go out of lines or something. You can always go back with that background color and uh, repaint. Now I'm going to do these little dabs like this because I don't want a straight line. This is going to give an indication maybe that there's a little bit of fur there. this up just a little bit that's it just a little bit of detail just really makes a big difference uh, let's see I don't think I have any more that are standing but 
So there you go. You go from, you could definitely do something like this if you wanted to, but if you just wanted to add a little bit of pop, there you go. So we are going to make some babies. They're going to be following. All right. And again, these are, I've done these before, so they're all dry. If you have any questions along the way, give me a question or a comment. If there's a little animal you'd like to see me try to do, uh, just let me know. All right, so we're gonna use that same creamy white. It was white with a little bit of tan, a little bit of water. Uh, and again, we're just gonna go under the chin. Something like that. A little bit on the belly. that and there you go not much but again gives um some really nice detail let's see if i can get it so you can see this a little bit better that little detail very very simple and there we go we got a mom and some babies. All right, so let's check this out. Nope, that's already dry from literally a few minutes ago. Here's one that I actually already have done. So we'll look at this deer here and we look at the details that are on the deer. Do this. So again, they kind of have a whitish creamish chest, a little bit under the chin belly and then on that back legs these are white tailed deer so if her tail was up in the air um, there's actually a lot of white underneath there so but her tail is down here's one where the tail is up this is a little fawn so you see i put a lot of white there maybe a little bit on the ear there too and so i'm going to kind of use that same color maybe a little bit more Let's go back to my fine brush a okay. uh, little more white just a touch of tan give it a little creaminess smidge of water And let's try this little guy. Hi, Glimmer. Very cool. Thanks for uh, what kind of laser do you have uh, and where I asked to buy your wood. Um, we have an Epilogue laser. Uh, it's a mini 50 watt. And um, we get our wood from a couple of different places. Um, I live near Lowell. So the two places we're going to go to is Bolter Lumber, uh, which is in Medford. Or I go to Highland Hardwoods, which is in Brenton, um, New Hampshire. Uh, I really like Highland Hardwoods because uh, they have a lot of different types of hardwoods. Uh, so we we'll maybe not necessarily just get plywood there because uh, we kind of do a lot of stuff. So we get the hardwoods and the softwoods and um, they're really a great place for us to go to. Uh, we're going to do, yeah. So I kind of shouldn't have put it on that side, but I'm kind of glad I did so I can show you guys how to fix uh, if you have a little bit of a mistake. So 
Again, we got a little bit under the chin here. I'm going to do a little bit on the ear. A little more on that tail. Also on the back of the legs. The body here. Okay, so it is as simple as going back. Oh, I'm not like in that chest part. And then you're just going to let that dry and repaint it. So no worries if you've made any type of a mistake. You're welcome, Glimmer. So once again, we're going to let that dry. So let's see. How about we try a fox? They're one of my favorites. So this is what it's going to end up looking like. And a lot of times when I'm doing these and I'm trying to figure out what uh, what I want for details, I'll actually find some pictures of uh, those animals uh, so I can see what colors are there, where are the details, what details that I want to put in or not. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to start with the white since we've already started there. And this I do want a nice bright white. No creamy colors at all. This is going to be white. Um, you, you find with fox, they have very distinct color patterns. And let's see, I'm just going to put a touch on the ear. They typically have a patch under their jaw and on their chest. And again, all I'm doing is dabbing. So what, instead of going down, which would leave a straight line, if you take your brush and just kind of do this little motion right here, and that's going to give a little indication of fur. If you feel like you need it to be brighter, then you just go back and put a little bit more paint on it. There we go. Fox definitely have very bright white. And this is a little red fox. So foxes are a favorite in my family, and there's a really cute story behind the foxes. Uh, when my mom was young, uh, when she graduated from high school, my aunt uh, actually got her a fox as a pet. I don't recommend that now. This was a totally different time, but got her a pet fox um, for a graduation gift and named it Ringo because the Beatles were very popular at the time. So you can go down as far as you want with this white, and then we're gonna end up going over it with some black. But it's kind of nice to do those layers. It makes it a little bit more naturalist, natural looking. So we're just gonna let that dry. Right. So who's next? Um, how about we try a little beaver? I was looking, I have these plates full of cutouts so I can do them. And I was looking to see, the porcupine is really cute. So I was looking to see if I have any porcupine cutouts. Let me take a look.
Nope, I got no more porcupine. I must have used them all. I'll have to cut some more out of those. They're really cute. But there, it's actually a pretty easy one to do, even though it looks like there's a lot of detail. Um, so it's just the brown background. And then I just go in with some lighter colors and basically add little lines to make them look like quills. Uh, this was, a, this was a, I used to work with a couple of different types of porcupine. And these guys are pretty friendly. Um, their quills are actually hair, believe it or not. And they're very sharp. When they are born, they're actually soft like hair. But after it gets in contact with air, it becomes very hard. And then it's like a needle. And I can tell you it hurts a lot. Um, but if you go in the direction of the quills, you could theoretically pet the porcupine without getting quilled. I do not recommend it because they do not throw their quills, but the quills come off very easy and it's like needles. So don't pet a porcupine. That's the moral of that story. But there you go. That's a cute little porcupine. But we're going to do this little beaver here. And I already have one, so we can just kind of look at that. Super simple. We've got the creamy uh, chin patch, stomach, and a little bit darker brown on the tail. Uh, which I'll make that again with that tan and some black. So tan and white for the chin patch. A little bit more of a tan color than we did with the otter. So here we go. Right under that chin. And a patch to just in front of the legs. Very simple. down just a little bit more. And then I'm basically just going to touch that belly. There you go. Okay, and now I'm going to make the darker brown for the tail. A touch of black with that tan. And that way your shades are all going to be very, very similar as you're using the same color, just adding a darker light. There we go. Should we give it a baby? There we go. So same thing. Little tail. Just a little bit under the chin. A little bit on the belly. And there's my little beaver family. Okay, now I think we can go back to the fox. Really, like I said, does not take long for these to dry. So with the black, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do straight black, but add a little bit of water to it. So there's a little translucence. So if you're, you want something, you wanna kinda see the colors behind it, you just simply add water more water you add, it's going to be a little bit more translucent. The more straight paint you have, it's going to be more solid. 
So let's start with the tail. So we go from one edge and swoop up like that. And then what's really nice is when you go in and go right on top of that white, you definitely have what looks like fur. And when that dries, it might be too translucent. If that's the case, then I can just go over once again. Okay, and now for the legs. Tad on the tip of the nose, Maybe a little bit on the tip of the ear, and there is my fox. I think we need to make some babies. Two babies. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit, this is tiny, tiny, tiny. So we're going to do a little bit on the front of the ear, because they have white inside their ear. I'm going to do underneath the chin. If it's too much, I can just add that orangey back in. I'm going to do the chest, a tad bit on the belly, and you can go across that the second leg because that's in the background, right? Just kind of like that. Right. Same thing. We're going to do that front ear. I'm going to do the chin patch. Too much white there, but we will just go over with the red. And let's kind of do this. Makes it so that front leg is actually in the back. And we stop there. And we go pick up back here. And that's going to make... See right here, there's a break here. And that makes this one look like it's the one closest to you, and this is further away, and we're doing the opposite here. And then they have white on the tip of their tail. Like that. My goodness, that one's really cute. I haven't actually done that one before. I hate white. What brand of white do you use to get the best coverage? Seems like it's the only color that needs a few coats. Uh, true. And what I, I have a couple of different paints that I use. 
Uh, one is basically the cheapest type of paint that you can get. Um, this is Phil Walters, by the way. Uh, welcome, Phil. Um, the cheap paint that I'm using here, believe it or not, I got this from um, Ocean State Job Lots. And this whole tube was less than $3. Um, this is great for laser people. When I do what's called the color fill, I like to use this cheap paint because it lit, it actually has less pigment and it has more water, which when you're a painter, uh, typically that's not a good thing. However, because we're doing a color fill in laser um, and we're going to be wiping some stuff off and we don't want it to get into the grain, uh, that's actually a good thing. And let me see if I can find really quick an example. And I'm going to be actually doing a live on color filling. Uh, but here is color filling. So we lasered this sea star. Let me get it in the right. Sorry. There we go. So I lasered this sea star. And I don't mask it when I do it. I just, the first thing I do is I actually put um, shellac on it that will seal the grains on the top and then you let it sit when that's nice and dry i i usually will seal it and then put do it the next day then you laser so when you're done with the laser you're going to sand it to get that burn off because we want it really nice and clean you're going to seal it again this is very very important because when you seal it the second time, now it's going to seal the sides that you just lasered. When you lasered that, you exposed all the grains in there. And if you don't seal it, you'll get what's called bleeding. And the colors will go into the grain, and then you'll see all these little lines that come out. Once it's sealed really, really well, I'll take this paint, and again, I use the cheap paint because we kind of want it to be on top, and since it has a higher water content, uh, it's easier to wipe off. So then you just dab your colors on, you take a wet paper towel, you wipe it off, and you have this uh, really cool uh, color fill. It's a great way uh, to add pop to your laser. Um, my camera's not really showing the colors all that well, um, but I've got blue and I've got some dark blue in the bottom and lighter blues on the top and I've got little highlights. Um, it, this in real life is a striking color, these blues right here. And even these uh, orange and reds are a uh, pretty neat color. So that's going to be a whole nother live. I'm going to be going on about lasering and uh, color filling. So that's what a straight up, I lost it. Straight up laser looks like that. And color filling looks like that. Color filling does not need to be hard. Uh, the second type of paint I use is an artist paint. So this is um, Windsor and Newton. Uh, this is a lot more expensive. Um, I can't remember how much this was, but uh, it's like there's two ounces in here. And this two ounces was you know, probably around $6 or more. And this is uh, four ounces. And this was not even $3. So much better quality with the better quality. Uh, you'll only have to do it maybe once, maybe twice. Um, if you're not adding water to it, it won't be translucent. So you'll be able to have it pop. Um, 
I don't mind it not being a vibrant white because at least when I do your animals, you're not seeing a lot of vibrant whites in many of them, except for maybe Arctic ones. I've worked with Arctic foxes before. In the summer, in the wintertime, they are a vibrant white. Awesome questions, guys. Thank you. All right, so let's go back to our baby foxes. And now we're just going to add our black. Again, all we did with this black, so I don't want a vibrant black. I just added water to it. And if I wanted a darker black, then I can just go over it again. So let's see. I'm going to work on this guy first. Tip of the nose. Oop. Tip of this back ear. And the front one. So not a lot right there. The legs. I'm going to do a little bit black on these legs. We do have the darker legs of the socks. And then, you know, before I do want a more vibrant white on this guy. So I'm going to go back and add my white. Make it a little bit more vibrant. So he his back ear is going to have a lot more black on it, a little bit of black on this one. He's got the socks going on. It really doesn't take much, just a little bit of detail. And then we get the black. Make sure you go over that white. So yeah, go on the internet, find whatever your subject matter, no, sorry, subject matter is, and use that as a reference. That's just a guide to help you figure out where your color patterns are going to be. Because nose. I'm not even putting eyes in. I'm just keeping it fairly vague. And here we go. We have an otter, a little baby. So we just did that. We have, I guess I'm thinking about spring because it's like 18 degrees here. So it's pretty cold. All right. We have fox with their little babies. Our deer. Again, what do you do with these? We talked about this a little bit. Um, easily do really cute magnets. So I use scrap wood on my laser. So it might be quarter inch, might be eighth inch. Uh, ooh, I lost the camera. Okay. Put all different colors. This one just happens to be a purple. Um, you make your cutouts at Really, it does not have to be animals. Obviously, it can be whatever shape or interests you. But I'm looking at these four um, towns. And I'm just trying to make quick and easy things. Um, and people really like the town. So I'm, I would glue these on. In Lowell, we happen to have uh, a 
bald eagles, some bald eagles here, which I think is super cool. So maybe I'll have him up there. There is a lot of wildlife around here. Um, there's some rivers. Merrimack River goes in here. Uh, so maybe you would do your, your beavers. Maybe you have a cute little skunk. That's a magnet. Maybe you're doing an ornament. Same thing. I would put my town. And maybe you just do your fox. We have a dove. So many possibilities. These are just a few things. I, I have a lot of things that I use these critters for. Um, when it came to the tree, my favorite thing was these birds. It's the only one I have left that has detail on it, but I do detail on these as well. So we got a blue jay, we got a cardinal, we got a dove. Dove up here. Right, something like that. And then, let's see. This was one of my favorite deer. I like to just put the little deer. Well, everything just fell off. Little deer sleeping on the bottom. Super cute little ornament. These were really easy. Whether you put details in or not put details in, just a splash of color. Um, all of this was made with scrap wood. Um, whether it's a quarter inch, I showed you this was a quarter inch because that's what I had. This is an eighth inch. Um, I use a lot of Baltic birch. This one I haven't sanded yet, but I do sand them. I like them to be nice and clear, clean. So here's one. If you're going to be gluing it to the back of something, don't worry about sanding it. But your front, you want nice and clean because you want a clean palette. All right, with that, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to paint some other things. Um, again, we have a lot of different subjects that we're going to be doing. Uh, this is Elephant Memories. We are a channel of makers, and we make all kinds of stuff, uh, generally woodworking. Uh, we do resin. We have a laser. We have a CNC machine. Uh, we paint. We even have a letterpress. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, that's what a maker is. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.